So here is a comprehensive guide of how to set up your Elgato HD60 to work with a PS3. <laughs> So if you've been having issues with your Elgato HD working with the PS3 and maybe it's broken, maybe it stopped working as mine has, obviously you can't be asked to buy another HD. There is a cheaper and more effective way to get the best quality output on your PS3, same time buying something which is much cheaper and it works with HD60. And that is a HDMI splitter. Now, what am I talking about? This is a HDMI splitter. Now, a HDMI splitter, generally all it does is it splits a HDMI C. Now, if you haven't played your PlayStation 3 on with the HDMI cable, which a lot of people who have recorded through the Elgato HD have been doing, wouldn't have been using HDMI cable because you can't actually send signal through a PS3 through HDMI because of the HDCP automatic handshake that happens between the PS3 and the Elgato. So if you buy Elgato HD anyway, you wouldn't be able to play through HDMI, it just won't let you do it because Sony have made uh, this hardware inside their units uh, where it stops people from piracy of products because obviously what you could do if you if it didn't have that is you could put a DVD into the unit and just copy that DVD straight. But this is a workaround. So this is how this works with the HD60. Now, for the purpose of this uh, video, this is what your HDMI spare will come in probably, a clear plastic wrapper of some sort. And inside you'll get two things. Once you've got that out, you can chuck that away. You've got a power cable. Doesn't always come with the actual adapter for your country's pin. They normally just wire, uh, put it like this, with the other end being USB compatible. Now this is actually ideal, because that way you can plug this to work off pretty much anything. Also, you get one of these. This is the HDMI splitter that we'll be using in today's video and it's the cheapest one on the market. Uh, this uh, comes in at a record £6.75 which is about maybe $8. It's stupid cheap not to go with this particular model because it is the cheapest one on the market. So what do you need to do next? Very simple. All you need to do is hook things up. Don't worry, I'm going to show you how this is done, like a professional. So here we have the PlayStation 3, and here we have the HDMI splitter. What you've got to do, you've got to have three HDMI cables. The first one has got to go from the PS3, like this, all the way around into the input of the HDMI splitter. And then the power source is just next to it, which I'm going to do right now. Okay, so power cable goes into the power point, which is just there. You plug that into here, like so. And then you plug it into a point of power, which is, for me, my computer. And then you'll get these funky lights come up. There's no lights on this side on at the moment, but it's got power. That's the main thing you need to know. These LED lights here indicate that there's power source going to this. And these, this is active and powered and ready to go. So now we plug in the PS3 into this point here. So this HDMI cable goes into the input of the splitter. This is plugged into my PS3 already. So you just plug that straight into here, like so. Now for phase two. Phase two includes another HDMI cable. This HDMI cable goes into the output one of your splitter. So as you'll see on the splitter, you've got two outputs. You've got output one and output two. You're gonna put this particular HDMI cable into the output one. And then another light should come on. That light indicates that it's active and it's powered. So now we can move on to phase three. What you'll need for phase three is another HDMI cable. This HDMI cable is going into the output two of the splitter. Output 2 
you plug that into there, you will get another blue light come on. The other blue light that, that will come on will be to indicate that the Elgato is receiving the signal from this HDMI cable to the Elgato. But we're going to plug that in now, so then you get to see how it's going. So this is the finished setup. So as you can see, there's two, two LED lights on. One for the HDMI 1, which is going to the TV. One for HDMI 2, which is going to the Elgato input. And on the back, we've also got a HDMI going from here to the PlayStation and one going for, for the power, which is going from here straight into the side of my computer, which is there, which actually powers the unit. On the HD60, please ignore this cable. This is for when I play the PlayStation 4. So ignore that HDMI cable there. So on the HD60, input, which is where the mini USB goes into, which goes into your computer. So the input, you have the HDMI going from output two from the splitter into this port here and then obviously your USB cable goes from here straight into your computer or laptop whatever you use it. So after you've done all this you're going to come up with a problem. The problem is going to be it won't work basically. You will open the Elgato HD software which you should already have downloaded if you don't the links in the description down below and you're going to cut meet this problem. Now, after you, after you see this problem, you're gonna be like scratching your head, like what the hell's going on? The problem is gonna be with the PS3. Because you have probably been using uh, the Elgato HD to obviously record your gameplay, you've been using the component cable instead of a HDMI cable. With the HDMI in place, the PS3 is now working through a HDMI signal, which means it needs to be reset. Now to reset your PS3, all you have to do is this so my ps3 is here and what you have to do i've already done this so i'm just going to just show you just so that everybody knows how to do this you, you got your power button on your ps3 just there and mine's already on but basically when it's off press on the power button and you press and you hold you wait for a second beep it's a single beep you wait for that second beep as soon as you've heard the second beep you let go as soon as you let go you will see on your TV screen uh, the settings to basically adjust the screen. The signal is going to be sent through a HDMI cable. So prior to doing all of this part of this setup, the first thing you should really do is connect your PS3 straight to a TV through HDMI, reconfigure the settings for HDMI signal to be sent to that TV, then do the setup of the actual HDMI splitter because otherwise you're going to be faced with a screen that you're not going to quite understand and you're going to think the product isn't working when it works perfectly fine. This was an issue I found and this was an issue that was not raised by anybody on any tutorial that I watched of how to do this either which is why I've made this tutorial is because those tutorials haven't actually picked up on this particular issue. So if you find that screen all you need to do uh, is to connect your PS3 to your TV first, run the settings by holding and pressing the power button on the PS3 for when you switch it on and holding for this first beep and then after that run you through some settings, you just select whatever the hell it is and you carry on. And once you've done that then you can actually do the setup of the splitter, otherwise it, it won't work. It will reject the splitter and it will say that, that it doesn't support this file. And if you open up the Elgato HD software, it will actually say zero times zero, no input. So once you connect everything up, then you can literally run your software as you want. Whether you're using OBS, whether you're using the Elgato HD software itself, it doesn't matter, it will work no matter what. A lot of people have said that it won't be able to get 1080p signal with 60 frames. That's not true, you can actually use a full 1080p output with 60 frames, and not only that, you can also change the coloring from standard to expanded, um, which gives you a much higher color range for HDMI. So you can actually go onto your uh, PlayStation settings and actually change the HDMI output so that you've got higher field of color range and so on and so forth, so you can get better depth of coloring. So yeah, it does actually work literally just like a PS4. Obviously bearing in mind that when you select uh, what console you're using, obviously select the ps4 do not select the ps3 because it doesn't recognize it as a ps3 anymore because it's going through the hd60 so you select ps4 once you've selected ps4 
you just go through the settings you can change it as you want uh, obviously some computers might struggle so obviously i'm using a gaming pc um, which is running an i7 core processor and an nvd 1080 gtx card so obviously with i've got 16 gig of ram as well so i'm running a really fast pc so not everyone might be able to do the 60 frames or the 1080p output if your machine struggles to show you the image from the ps3 it's because your output's too high so then you'll have to adjust it accordingly the main reasons why i say to do this is one your elgato hd will eventually break mine has after two years so i've had mine for two years and it's broken now elgato try to fix it nothing worked all the rubbish they try to do with it it just hardware failure so two years later i mean is it really worth the investment i don't think it is considering i've got a hd60 which i know is going to last a lot longer uh, because the hardware inside is a lot stronger and it's been built for to work a lot longer as well so with that in mind spending seven quid on a product that's going to help you transfer the signal from the ps3 to the elgato hd60 is much better i just want to say a massive thank you for joining us today if you enjoyed this video please leave a like on it if it helped you also please leave a like on it be sure to subscribe uh, with notifications switched on because i do plenty of other videos uh, not just these tutorial with videos but also we do live streams every friday saturday and sunday and also don't forget to go check out the brand spanking new merch which is dropped for christmas be sure to go check that out asap because you can get yourself uh, the cheapest 2025 merch uh, before the end of the Christmas period. If you guys have got any suggestions and you want me to do any other kind of video, please let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to go check out the sponsored links. They're there to save you money. But until next time, guys, as always, stay safe, stay awesome, and peace.